Good morning, all. Thank you for joining us this morning. I just want to let everyone know as people start to trickle into this presentation that this session will be recorded um, and we will be starting right at 11 a.m. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on wherever you may be joining us today. Uh, you have joined a webinar for families whose student is starting college at UC San Diego this fall and is participating in the summer programs, Summer Bridge and the Chancellor's Associates Scholars Program. Now, even though this webinar is for families, we hope that your student is with you today. Uh, today's webinar includes an activity that will be fun for both of you to do together um, so to prepare for it, uh, we do ask that you have a pen or pencil um, and a piece of paper with you by your side. Uh, again, as I reiterated, as we let everyone into the room, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, and also before we get started, I just want to point out that there is a Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. Please utilize that to post any questions you may have during our presentation today. We have a team who will be answering questions through the, the Q&A feature, and we will also have a section of our presentation at the end to answer questions live um, from either myself, um, Dr. Karina Vio, the senior officer, or our panel that we have with us today. And if you have questions specific to either Summer Bridge um, or CASP, please indicate that in your questions today. So today, this presentation, you're gonna be joined by myself. My name is Dan Perez. I am program coordinator for parent and family programs, and I will be the moderator for today's presentation. Um, joining us, we have a great panel of two students and a parent of UC San Diego student, um, and our senior officer of parent and family programs, uh, Dr. Karina Vio, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Sunday. Uh, my name is Karina Vio, Senior Officer for the Office of Parent and Family Programs, and I'm joined by Dan Perez and a good team of uh, students um, and a parent ambassador. So I will pass it on to Mirna to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Mirna Martinez. I'm gladly to say I'm one of the parent ambassadors. Uh, I've been for four years already into my daughter graduate this year and I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Mirna. Diane, would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. My name is Diane. I, am, I just graduated from UC San Diego uh, last month and um, from your college and my major was political science international relations. I'm excited to be here with you all today. Awesome. And Kumudra. Hi, good morning and good afternoon. So my name is Kumudra. I also just graduated last month with human bio major and I'm from, I was from SIS College. Awesome, thank you all for joining us today. Um, and just to give you our attendees some more information about the Office of Parent and Family Programs, uh, our office teams with many campus departments and services to provide the help that you need to support your student during their journey here at UC San Diego. Uh, and we will be telling you more about who we team with, the programs and events that we offer, and how we can help service you um, during your student's time here. 
So again, congratulations on your students' acceptance in the UC San Diego and the beginning of their journey with either the Summer Bridge or CAS program um, and their start at UC San Diego. And we know that getting admitted and starting at UC San Diego is um, a family accomplishment. And as the Trine family, we wanna welcome all of you to the university. Um, getting to college and going through college, we know is a family endeavor. Many are involved in supporting your students to get to this point. Mom, dad, grandparents, sister, brother, family, friends are all in this with you, the student. Your family is successful in supporting you using the skills, assets, and life experiences they possess. With that, there are takeaways we want you to gain from this webinar. We acknowledge that times are different. The college experience looks different. Learning from professors and peers looks different. You will learn how to and work with and supporting your student while in the summer program. And you will learn how the Office of Parent and Family Programs supports you and learn about future events to be aware of. Now, the purpose of today is to support your student during this summer program. Um, and we would like to call your attention to the verb negotiate. All of you have been learning from home since March. Remote learning may not be so new, but with a new environment like college comes new ways of approaching things. So I would like to ask you all the audience to take a moment and think about what does negotiate mean to you. And for our panel, um, I would like you to think about what negotiate means to you and if you could maybe share uh, briefly what negotiate means to you. Um, and Myrna, if you would like to start off by sharing what negotiate may mean to you. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Time, space. I think those are, um, you know, for, for me, my, my experience, it was um, the time that everybody needs at home because, you know, it, it's, the, it's not a big space and you need to negotiate either the living room, um, be quiet, that way my daughter could study and have her own time, not to be interrupted, not to be loud, especially when she was taking tests um, or lectures. Um, so I think communication is part of that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Muna. Kamudra, could you share what negotiate may mean to you? Yes, of course. So um, I already agree with what Marina had mentioned. I, for me, the important part of negotiate means like communication, time, and space. Those are actually the most important um, the, the categories for negotiating because I, uh, I took my classes online through like the whole spring quarter and then I was back at home in San Francisco sharing my space with my family. And for me personally, I don't have my own room, which I have to share with my mom. So in order to have that little space where I can study and where I can have like a lone moment and when I'm in the class or when I'm talking with the professors whatnot. So I would say that like, if you want something like a privacy, communication is very important to making sure that you're clearly communicating with your family saying that, hey, you know, I need, I need this time period blocked up by myself. So can you not like come to my room or can you, can you please like give me this space and time, you know? And the, Important part of that communication is to make sure that you're not um, being rude or disrespecting to one another because again, you're living, parents and students are going to be living together in the same household and it is important to sometimes, but like it's kind of concerning to sometimes like get a little angry or a little annoyed just because, oh, your little brother kept like disturbing you and whatnot. So the important is that you need to also be patient when you're communicating with your family. So. That would be my definition of negotiating. Great, thank you. And, and Diane, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, not too much more to add, but as was mentioned, communication is super important and just being able to like 
remind yourself as a parent that your student is going to school. They're not just hanging out in an extended summer vacation. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they definitely have to like focus on their classes and their homework, their assignments, their clubs, but it's also important as a student to remember that you are coexisting with your family and you have to be there to support your family just as much as they are there to support you. Great, thank you all for sharing. And please audience, kind of keep those things in mind and what your definition of negotiate means to you as we move forward in this presentation. Okay, so this is the activity that I mentioned before, but if you do, please make sure you've got your pen and pencil um, and paper with you. Uh, and again, we highly recommend that families and their student do this activity together. Um, and so what we wanna share with you is Angela's experience, which can very much be your own experience. And Karina, if you'd like, could you please read yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah, thank you so much for um, what's been shared so, uh, so far about the art of negotiation. And like um, Dan just mentioned, it's going to be key um, in going through this exercise, but it's also going to be key in um, your student moving forward with the programs that they've signed up for for this summer um, and thinking about talking to one another about what is needed for both your student and the rest of the family. So what I want to do is actually give you about 15, 20 seconds to read Angela's case. This is a case study that, again, could be kind of reminiscent of your own experience as a student, as a family. So take the next 15 seconds to read the case study, and then I'll read it with, um, for everyone just shortly after. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to read the entire case study or have gotten far enough into it. So this is Angela's case study. Angela's a first year at UC San Diego. She's studying from home, much like all of you will be doing with the summer programs. She's taking four classes for a total of 12 credits. So classes are all remote. They're all virtual classes. She has a lot of work to do and reading to do. She also joined a student organization that meets twice a week that she really enjoys. So community is very important for Angela and I'm sure it will be very important for your student as well. One day during class, Angela's little sister, Stacy, entered their, their shared bedroom. When class was over, Angela told Stacy she felt interrupted when she entered the room in which she had knocked first. Later, Angela's grandmother asked that she go to the market with her and help her with making dinner. Angela thinks, goodness, I have a lot of work to do. There's too much going on um, in this house. Angela feels pulled in a lot of different directions. There's family, there's schoolwork, and there's friends, and it's difficult for her to focus. So what I'd like for you all to do is to think about Angela's situation, her sister, Stacy, and her grandmother, and then discuss among each of these three questions. The first question, what would you recommend Angela do to manage school, friends, and family tasks? The second question, if you are Stacy and her grandmother, how would you support Angela? And then the third task, how would you redefine the spaces in the home to meet everyone's needs? So hopefully you have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper uh, you can work together with your student answering these questions. Think about where negotiation might fall into this case study. And we'll give you about, what, a minute, a minute and a half, Dan, for them to kind of talk through the case. Uh, we'll play a little bit of music, and then we'll get back and we'll have a discussion about it. So we will start the time now and play some background music.
just a few seconds left. Okay, we are ready. So hopefully you've been able to have a good discussion about Angela between yourself and your students. Um, so right now what I'd love to do is bring in our panel. Um, and we're so happy to have a panel because, you know, Dan and I can only say so much from our own professional standpoint, right? But it's really lovely to hear from students who have gone through it, who can share their experience and um, to have a, a parent family try an ambassador who's been with us for four years, helping with the program or helping with the office for quite some time to also share her experience as a parent. So I'm going to start with Diane. Diane, with the first question, what would you recommend Angela do to manage schoolwork, friends, and family? And maybe you can talk about this from your own experience. Yeah, so what worked really well for me in managing all of my activities, classes, still hanging out with my friends or still Zooming with my friends, <laughs> um, and just any task that I had to do. I, I'm very big on writing everything down on Google Calendar or in my agenda, and that makes it very easy for me to track everything that I have to do, crossing out things, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> um, and yeah, just knowing that, like, just having a time to account for every activity that I have to do and scheduling in so that I know, like, okay, certain, this certain time has to be designated to this activity, my homework, my classes. And um, as for friends, it's just really important to like, keep messaging them, keep checking in with them and saying, like, hey, like, how are you doing? Do you want to, would you like to talk sometime later? I, something me and my friends used to do a lot was set designated times weekly or bi-weekly to, like, check in with each other have like a game night via Zoom, but also understand that it's very possible to get what we call Zoomed out, which means <laughs> that sometimes you're on Zoom for a really long time and you're staring at your computer screen for a really long time and it's very uh, likely that you could get tired of staring at your computer for that long of a time. So just being able to understand that mm -hmm. you're not always going to want to be on your computer and just being like, okay, we can try again next week or another day. Like, Make sure you take care of yourself. Yeah, writing everything down, keeping a schedule. And yeah, just constantly checking in on people. That's what I would recommend. Awesome. Um, for Mirna, can you talk about, you, you talked a little bit about space earlier in the introduction. Can you talk about redefining the spaces at home to meet everyone's needs? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience. Um, I have three daughters and everybody wants to move out. So I think I used all the space. And when this happened, my oldest daughter had a baby and she feel more safe to be with me than be by herself in her apartment. So, and then when this happened, Carla was, um, at UC San Diego probably for um, two weeks. And then she say, I guess all my classes are gonna be online. So I need it, I, I'm gonna go home. I don't wanna be by myself. So then my other daughter, she say the same thing. I'm going home because I think that's the best place for me to be. So it was really hard because a little kid knocking the door all the time is not easy. And Carla, sometimes what Diane say, it needs, sometimes can be a little time or sometimes can be long time being in the computer. So communication, it's, I, I would say that's the key for everything. She, one day we sat and we talked and we say, okay, these are my hours that I need to be in my room. I mean, I know that it's really hard because all we need to be inside, uh, but I need this time. It's not gonna be all day, but at least from this time to this time, I need my space. So 
all we were we're working from home, so all we need some some space. So when all we got together and talk about what time to what time everybody was gonna be either in the room or in the living room and not to be interrupt because my daughters are taking their masters also so they are still taking some classes i was working so i need my space too so i i would say communication is very very important and be clear and what kumodro say not to be rude or not yelling or be upset because remember we're gonna be who knows how long and it's 24 7. so patient <laughs> yeah yeah patience will definitely be important so how yes. so this you're talking about maybe you know four ish or five people at home everyone needs to do work on the laptop everyone has deadlines to meet and homework to do and reading to accomplish. Um, how did you come to an understanding that this space is needed for me during this time and this space is needed for me for that time? How did you all come to an understanding? Did you have, um, you know, a schedule to share? Can you talk a little bit about Absolutely. that? Absolutely because um, not everybody is gonna be at the same times. Like for me, it was being on my computer since 5.30 in the morning into like a three. So, but I have my breaks where I can, you know, do some little other things. Uh, for Carla was a little bit more, I will say, um, flexible time because a lot of classes they were pre-recorded so the problem I would see it's like my other daughter that she had zoom meetings so a schedule at the times and that's what we did what Diane say get your agenda get your calendar and say look this is how we are gonna do we have one of those white big boards and we schedule everything the same thing as you know um i saw carla that she had a at her dorms that they have oh from this time to this time so and so is not gonna be here or it's gonna have a class of this so that's the same my three daughters they've been in college so they have kind of the same system that where they write them up oh this time to this time i'm gonna have a class or i'm gonna have a meeting or i have a test so that way we had it over there at the kitchen so we know that it's gonna be there and 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 we already know but we already had talk about it because remember i mean if we don't talk nobody can listen to us <laughs> so we need to communicate that way everybody knows what is going on right <laughs> exactly exactly so you had a schedule everyone wrote down when they needed space and what their schedule was like and everyone had this one thing to look at agree on and follow as a family yes awesome that's awesome um Kermudra, so you you talk a little bit about um your space in san francisco at the introduction um can you talk about how you relate to angela's case how Angela's case reminds you of your experience? Well, um, for with Angela's case, I say that because she's being kind of like interrupted now and then while she's in the meeting or while she, you know, uh, she's in the room that her little sister come over or her grandmother kept asking uh, for like help and whatnot. So my situation is that it's not that um, like I have my own, I don't have my own room. So I was like kind of distract, distracted by like having a space in the public space, which is like the, in the living room where everybody's like all together. So, but the living room is the only way that I have a table and a space for me to like steady. So when I'm there, my mom is there, my brother, my uncle, everybody's all there. And I can't have a quiet meeting where it's like everybody's all talking like around me. So it's get like really, um, distracted you know and um another one is that my mom uh kind of close similar to angela's situation i'm the girl in the family so 
she, my mom would be the first thing, the first person that she would ask to get help is from me to like um, help clean, organize the house or help, you know, uh, help her cook, help my uncle like cook and whatnot. So it's like, I will, I will get a little annoyed sometimes because sometimes I'll be working, but then if she comes, if she asks me to like go help and I'm like, okay, I'll take a break from, uh, from like working and I'll go help my mom. But then after helping too much, I will get tired and I'm like, okay, I don't want to study anymore. I just want to like take my own mm -hmm. break. And so if you, if that keep happening, you get distracted and you get behind from schoolwork, which is not good for you. But then if you keep, if you always like keep working on your schoolwork and not helping to your family, it's not good for your family as well. Cause your family would then get mad and be like, oh, you never you know, help out at home and whatnot and things get heated, you get into a fight, which is not a good idea. So what I try to do is that I mentioned before patience. Patience is a really important, um, important skill to have. Make sure that you are like, if, because again, your parents are older than you, you have to really respect in it. You have to make sure that you're talking it properly in a way that you're not disrespecting your family and say that, hey, mom or mom or dad, hey, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I really have to do this work. Can you give me this time and space? And if it helps, like what I did was I actually or created an Excel sheet when I created my own schedule. Um, because like, yes, the writing an agenda is also good, but then sometimes like online classes, since sometimes they offer like pre-recorded lectures, it's different than when you're actually going in person because pre-recorded, you don't have to be in this, right? Like if the class is at 9 a.m., you don't have to be there at 9 a.m. You can just like listen at like, at night at nighttime or something like that so that's why um it's important to like create your own schedule and be like if you let's say you wake up from like seven and let's say okay breakfast time seven to nine a.m make a make a time make a time slot and make sure that you're actually like following that schedule and always like put uh, an hour or two or even like dinner time to just give a space for your family you know and like share that, share the schedule with your family and be like, hey, mom, dad, like this is my schedule. Um, I'm sharing it with you. And I have this gaps where I will be hanging out with you and whatnot. But the other gaps like, OK, this two hour I'll be working, like I'll be helping you out at home, like with the housework, like cleaning dishes, whatever that I need to do with you. And this one hour will be like family time, just like maybe watching a movie or, you know, just talking and hanging out with the family. And but this at night time from eight to ten p.m. That's my study time and whatnot. So, like create that block of like schedule and try to like follow it because yes, like creating is easy. And a week later you might not follow it. So just make sure that you're like on track of thing. And it will be hard in the beginning, but you just it's a self discipline. It's really good self discipline. It's not only like especially for this like first year students who's coming in who do not have the experience of being on campus and actually have that experience of how to be an adult. I feel that this way, like making organization, creating schedule would be like a great way for you, for everybody to like learn how to be an adult. So that's the, like the biggest advice that I would give. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like scheduling is very important to just take the time to write down what is your week going to look like maybe for the month if you're able to kind of fill in what those things are going to be for the month but it sounds like everyone playing a role in um having one schedule already sharing each other's schedule with one another and you know exactly where people are falling in terms of um school um school demands social demands and home demands um so that seems to be a, a pretty big theme between Diane Kamudra and Mirna. Um, one more question. Maybe we can start with Diane. What, so with question number two, what would you recommend to Stacy and grandmother, right? We talked about the student creating a schedule and so on and so forth. Um, and every family is completely different. The size of the home is completely different. The dynamics of someone's home is completely different. So there's not one specific answer for any of these questions, but for your recommendation, what would you recommend to Stacy and grandmother to support Angela in this case? Diane, do you want to start? Yes. Um, for the grandmother, I think it's very important for, well, first of all, for Angela to realize that she does need to help around the house and 
so I'm going to the market is like a very reasonable request from her grandmother to ask, but she also needs to be able to talk to her grandmother and be like, Hey, like today I'm actually going to be really busy. Do you mind if I go a little bit later or just being able to, as we were talking about scheduling, if it's possible, like sit down with grandma and say, Hey, like, when do we need to go to the grocery store? When do we need to like do these certain errands and then just plan them out ahead of time early on in the week so that we can like fit in everything class wise, um, school organizations, hanging out with friends, helping grandma in the kitchen. So yeah, just knowing when is like the best time for both Angela and for grandma to get these errands done. And as for Stacy, it's, it's definitely going to be a mission for both of them because they share a room and it's a, a, a very likely scenario where a lot of us do share rooms with our siblings. Me, I don't necessarily share a room with my sister, but she always loves to be in there. <laughs> so, um, so it's just being able to talk to your younger siblings, even your older siblings, like, hey, like from this time to this time, please, just please <laughs> let me have the room so that I can go to class or that I can take my test. Um, and then siblings actually are really understanding when it comes to things like that. At least I've learned from my sister, if I ask nicely or just like explain the situation, she'll be like, oh yeah, go ahead. I'll just hang out in the living room for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just expressing what you need and then just being able to like come to a, an agreement. Yep. Or even, you know, grab what you need before I start this class because once the door is shut, it's shut, right? So just kind of giving a heads up, hey, I'm going to be in this class, grab what you need for now, and then, you know, we'll connect afterwards. Mirna, do you have any recommendation for Stacy and grandmother to support Angela? Well, um, in my case, as an adult, I think it, it's a new experience for all of us, um, but we are the adult, so we need to understand and I think a lot of times we feel like what we say, that's what they need to do. Um, and if we communicate with them and ask them nicely or say, uh, when do you think that can be the best time for you to go with me to the store or just ask. And um, I have that a little, uh, I would say problem because Carla, you know, she thinks that she knows better than everybody. So she she didn't allow me to go to the store. So she's like, no, I'm gonna go because I know how much chemicals we can use to clean everything when we go to the store and what we can use. So I haven't been allowed to go to the store. So I need to accomplish at her time. So she's like, from this time to this time, I'm gonna be available that's the time that we can go to the store. So I feel that me as an adult, even though that she's an adult too, right? But I'm the older, so I need to understand what she is trying to do. I need to put in her shoes and see that she can, she, if she's not available in the morning, I need to wait until the afternoon. Or try to accomplish, you know, everybody's time. So uh, if I were to be that grandma, I think that would be one of the situation and ask her, when do you think that you can be available to go with me? You know, um, communication <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a big, what did I say? A very expensive word. <laughs> but um, I think it's part of that and a lot of times um, we don't understand. We feel like uh, we need to do something right now because this is the best time. And we need to understand that what they say. A lot of times it, it can be recorded or it can be in person. So sometimes they can say, oh, okay, I can see this later. But sometimes it's impossible. So we, everybody need to adapt at different times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. So as we wrap up with this, this slide and, and move forward, um, what, what we've been able to capture is that 
communication is huge. Uh, negotiating oh, yeah. your needs is, is huge. Um, creating a calendar is going to play a big role in where people sit and where people um, have demands for school, for home, for family, for social events. Those things don't stop. Um, the good news is that as incoming first year students um, or transfer students, right, you have had experiences learning from home already, right? So a lot of the remote learning, you know, converted back in March. So you ended your high school years and, and your community college experience um, learning remotely. So you can take some of what you've learned um, at the end of spring semester into the fall quarter and into this um, summer, um, into the summer programs themselves and continue to what I would call edit yourself. Things are gonna change, priorities are gonna shift, you're gonna have assignments, there's gonna be some needs around the house. So learn to continue to talk to one another, negotiate your needs and communicate. I mean, I think communication just came out so many times in this discussion. So that's gonna be very important for everyone um, as you move forward and as you enter into the summer programs uh, with UC San Diego. So I'm gonna end there and ask Dan to move on with the next slide. Yeah. So one of the things we're learning is that being at home gives the student and the family a chance to learn together and from each other. And as your student gets started with the summer programs, uh, we recommend um, some suggestions. And uh, these suggestions are selecting a space at home that will be the student's working space, uh, creating a family schedule. I think this has been important. We've talked about understanding when students need to get work done or study versus when they have their family responsibilities and when they can assist in the house. So being on the same page when it comes to scheduling uh, and discussing expectations of one another um, ties back to being, you know, communication is key. Uh, apply what you all have learned since remote learning to this experience. So take those learned experiences from March and April and June and talk about it and how you can improve and utilize some of the strategies you already uh, may have used in the spring into this coming summer programs and the fall quarter. Uh, and be patient. It's a learning process for both the student and the family. Uh, and again, everyone is in this together and it's a new, a new unexplored uh, arena of learning for everybody. And so it's going to take some time to adjust to. All right, um, so um, what I like to say is that your student's experience um, touches a lot of different parts of UC San Diego. Um, your student's life, um, campus life or campus experience, you know, it'll, it'll be influenced by academic um, opportunities, housing and dining, the seven colleges. So there's, there are seven colleges at UC San Diego, your student's well-being, um, a number of different services like financial aid and scholarships, paying tuition, student legal services, and of course, employment, uh, where they can begin to practice their own um, skills related to their academic goals or um, other goals that they uh, will develop while a student at UC San Diego. Um, this is just a number, just a few um, offices that we work with, the Office of Parent and Family Programs works with throughout the year that will um, help you to gain resources um, to support your student. Um, and I just want to call your attention to the first two bullets, Summer Bridge and the Chancellor's Associate Scholars Program and their um, URL address. Um, obviously, I, I, I call these out because we're, this webinar is specifically for the participants of these two programs. So at any time, you may have questions about your student's experience. Um, they are good resources to, to reach out to. Um, but also for us, the Office of Parent and Family Programs, and we have a slide with more information on how to contact us that we are of service to you as well as parents and families to also gain um, knowledge about resources um, and other services that UC San Diego has. Uh, 
Uh, we also know that you are already part of your students' ongoing experience um, at UC San Diego, their entire education, really. And like we said at the very beginning, your student is where they are because of you. You have had a role in their education. You will continue to have a role in their education. Um, and you've done many things that are informal, right? What, whether it's taking them to sport, sports events or reading some of their papers, um, at home or you know, going to events in high school or the community college. Some of these opportunities continue at UC San Diego. Our office offers a couple ways to be involved uh, with us as well. One of them is a Triton Parent and Family Ambassador and Myrna is um, one that has been completely involved with the program throughout Carla's four years at UC San Diego. And what happens is that you sign up for that and whenever there's an opportunity to sit on a panel like in today's webinar or help with any events that we have on campus or if we need your perspective on something we might send you a survey uh, sign up for that and we know to contact you for these different opportunities we also have the first generation triton family connection this is a brand new initiative it's a e-newsletter that we will send about three to four times during the academic year and what it is, is that we ask you to contribute to the newsletter, answer a few questions. We learn about your experience. We learn about how you support your student and we publish that in the newsletter. So look for those on our website um, and, um, and they will move you forward once we have your information. What's next? So you're going through this webinar for these summer programs. Um, things to look forward to next that are actually kind of ongoing right now. Your student will be going through a new student orientation as a new student to UC San Diego. Um, these are happening between September 21st and 25th. They're hosted by your student's college. So talk to your student about which college that they are um, assigned to, which will be either Ravel College, John Muir College, Marshall College, Warren College, Roosevelt College, sixth college or seventh college. Um, there's information on new student orientation. There's also information on the pre-orientation via mycompass.ucsd.edu that your students should be, should be doing at this point. For families, um, the colleges are also hosting orientation. Um, the dates vary by your student's college and they also offer pre-orientation for families through mycompass.ucsd.edu. Again, find out your student's college, sign up for the orientation, and then they'll provide more information about that. Um, the Office of Parent and Family Programs works with a number of other departments on campus to put on homecoming and family weekend, which is October 23rd through the 25th. We will have family specific sessions leading to those dates. Registration will open in August. Um, so look out for those uh, as we start marketing. Um, and the reason why we share these with you is because these are additional opportunities to learn about campus resources that will support your student. It's an opportunity for your student to meet other students who are going through similar transition and experience. Uh, and it helps you and your student to participate in activities that will showcase, showcase more of the university and the resources that help your students. So, this is really an introduction to UC San Diego resources, but there's going to be so many different subsequent events and programs that will help you and your student to learn more about the university. All right, we have reached the question and answer section of our presentation. I know a few of you have already utilized that Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. So if you do have any more questions, please feel free to enter them down in there and you'll either get a response in the Q&A chat feature or we'll ask, you know, Karina, myself or the panelists some questions. So we do have um, a couple already from the Q&A and uh, I would like to throw this out to our panel and Karina, um, the question is, how does a parent keep track of the student's academic progress? So I think, Karina, I'm going to let you start with this one. Um, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask Mirna okay. first to talk about how her and Carla, uh, Carla just graduated this past June from UC San Diego, how maybe you, you may have had an understanding of 
Carla sharing her academic progress, and then I'll talk about it from a, you know, a policy perspective. Well, as a lot of people say that I'm a very nosy parent. <laughs> so um, I ask a lot of questions. I'm always asking her, uh, so how was the test? How's the class? How do you like it? What is the most important thing in that? Do you like the professor? Do you understand what he's trying to say? So I'm always, I'm, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that is good or bad, but uh, I'm always asking. And, and um, I don't know if it's what I say, good or bad. I always been in a PTS, SA parents meetings. I've been so involved in my daughter's school science pre-K. Um, so I'm always at the school. So all the schools that they've been, they know me very well. They, I'm still go there and the teachers recognize me. They even call me by my name. They never forget me. Um, so college, it haven't been the different. And you know that Karina, if I have a questions, I go and ask you, <laughs> or if I have any concern, I go and talk to you. So I, I mean, and it's not because I always say I don't, it's not, I don't trust them, but I just like to part of be involved in the kid's life. And even though when they are adults already, it, trust me, they feel really good when you ask question and you, even though when they say, oh, why you want to know, but I think it's important. I agree. I think, I think that's a great example of just asking those very questions you just mentioned. How's your professor? Do you like your professor? Which class do you like best? This is just one way of um, asking these open-ended questions that Carla can talk about. Hey, you know, I really like this professor because X, Y, Z, or I really like this class because X, Y, Z, or I'm struggling with this class because, you know, there's something happening with whatever, the content. So asking these open- hey. And the questions are, are great examples of learning about your students' academic progress. Were you going to say something? Yes. I just want to add, I don't know if this is important or not, but even just take your time and go and go to the dining with them over there at campus, knowing what kind of food they have. That's, trust me, I don't know, that builds up the communication with your kids. Um, Sometimes, even though they say, ah, oh, I'm tired of that food. I don't want to eat that food. So I used to go in the afternoons or in the weekend and say, oh, just let's go and have a lunch. Let's go have a breakfast right there. I just want to know what they are serving. That way you feel like, a, it, how do they feel? It's not the same when the kids are away than when they are at home. And I think it's very important for you to know what it's around, how you can say give it more advice and say oh don't go to this place go to that one it's better food and it's part of build up that communication with the students that's a great I think. point yeah that's a great point i think that if if you're a parent or family member of your um, incoming student and you're able to be on campus and check out their environment it's a great way to open up communication even more especially around academic progress um the other way of answering this question is that um, it's different. Your student in high school received a report card and you were in the know of their grades. Um, in college, not so much. Um, your student will be able to access their own academic progress. Um, everything is in the name of your student. Everything is emailed to your student. And so as a parent or family member supporting your student, you will not receive academic progress from their faculty or their professors or their advisors. It will be up to your student to share that information with you. Um, and what I like to say is to start talking about um, negotiating, you know, when or how to talk about their academic progress and adopt some of what Myrna has talked about, which is just to ask them about their professors and which classes they really enjoy, which ones are they struggling with, so on and so forth. So um, that would be the answer to this question, Dan. What's the next one? Next question. Uh, my student is the youngest and he needs a lot of help being organized. 
Uh, the parent says they're worried that he may not meet due dates. Is there a way to send reminders to me as well? Mm. I wonder if uh, Diane or Kamudra, if you could think about your first year self, how did you begin to become organized, adopt certain tools to help you be organized, um, and maybe helping to reassure your family that you're on top of things? Um, I could go first, I guess. Uh, well, for freshman year, um, well, I live on campus through my first year, freshman year, and for me, I have a, I'm not really good at, like, communicate. I, I'm good at communication, but I'm not really good at con keeping contact with your um, family on one, uh, which my mom doesn't like that at all. So I would recommend that, like, you, uh, if you're, like, living on campus or if you're away from your family, at least, like, check in with them um, every week, once a week, at least, you know. Uh, but for me, my personality, my pet peeve is not, like, my pet peeve is to make sure that I have everything, like, organized. And I, I like to keep my station clean because I actually live with, like, two roommates. We share a, a triplet, triple room. So it was pretty tiny. The room was pretty tiny, but in my suite, our room is actually the neatest room. Everybody come in and then my room is like super neat. All of my roommates, they're like really organized. They don't like, they don't like to have messy, messy tables or like messy beds and whatnot. So for me, like I was already organized with all my stuff. So um, that's one of the good thing. And uh, other than that, like, I communicate, I like talk with my roommates to be like, hey, so I sleep at this hour and I get up at this hour, which is important to talk about it. And uh, sometimes like the roommate can be sleeping early and then some want to be studying. So, you know, you have to discuss about whether to want to have the light, uh, the room light on because, you know, you, you're going to be distracting somebody else's sleeping. So those are like tiny little like um, problems or like, issues that you have to really like stay to talk about it. And um, I have, a, I had a good freshman year, so I have like nothing much to, um, nothing much to like complain or anything because for me, like I love meeting new people and San Diego was like a very new place for me too. And everybody uh, that I met are new to San Diego or like they're all, you know, starting their college with, uh, they don't have friends who are from high school coming to the same uh, college as me. So it's like everybody's in the same boat, you know, and they're there to like help you to go through together, go through the college life together and then making, starting to make friends, you know? So I never really like, I, my freshman year was really great. I don't have a problem with it. It, it was a good time. Awesome. Diane, can you talk about, um, you know, think about your, 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 your first year experience and how you were organized or learned to be organized or tools you might have used to stay organized um, and how you uh, communicate to your family, if at all, any deadlines you needed to meet. Yeah, of course. So um, coming in as a first year of college, I mean, my social life was amazing. My grades, not so much. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was just a very different experience from coming in as a straight-A student from high school. I thought I could do the same thing I was doing in high school sure. and keep going out. I could not. <laughs> um, so it was just being able to find that balance between still having a social life, still joining clubs, getting a job, and doing all those little extra things to make ends meet as well as making sure that my grades weren't declining. And so it definitely took me like a whole year to figure that out. But by the time like my second year came around, second, third, fourth, my grades kept on improving. I'm actually pretty proud of like how, how well I was able to improve my grades after my first year. So just realizing that what you did in high school isn't going to work for college anymore. <laughs> Um, knowing that your study habits have to change, you have to, it's, it's a lot more of keeping track of things yourself because in high school, I knew I could always count on my parents to wake me up for school if I didn't, if I was oversleeping or, um, you want me to like, Hey, do your homework. Hey, go have dinner. 
hey, go take a shower. <laughs> um, so I was, I was definitely very dependent on my parents to like keep reminding me of like little things like that. And then when I came to college, it was like, oh, I have to make sure I get up on my, by, with my alarm or make sure I feed myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, just being able to like pause and like take into account every little activity that I now had to do on my own. But once I was able to make a plan for myself, that at certain times for studying only, not socializing, <laughs> I was Absolutely. able to, yeah, to fix my, my uh, academic life and then ask for updating my parents. It's a lot of just being open with them. I know like coming in as a first year, I also was very excited, like, oh, freedom, independence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then... Um, which is why my social life was so great. <laughs> but um, my mom was always there to like text. She would text me every day and then she would remind me like, send me like little reminders like, hey, like make sure to take care of yourself and things like that. And then, but yeah, a lot of my first year was just my mom always texted me first. Okay. And then as you started progressing, I would reach out to her more. Mm. So that, so my relationship with my parents, I actually, I wouldn't say got significantly better since I left to college because all 18 years that I was at home I never really had like a chance to miss them and then once I like left home I was like oh I do miss my parents a lot actually mm -hmm. and so so the more um just like the more time went on in college like the more I was able to openly like reach out to them and be like hey like this is what's going on in my life what's going on with yours <laughs> right absolutely yeah and, and I think just to, to continue with the initial question of how you know, how to make sure your student meets the deadlines. What we're hearing from the students is that time management is going to be very important. There's going to be a learning curve. Even though your student is learning and going through the summer program and will start the fall taking online classes, there's still going to be some form of transition and doing things in a new way. It may be learning along the way that what was done in high school isn't really going to translate that well in college, but it's still a starting point to, um, learn how to approach college level uh, classes during this program and during the fall. Prioritizing is gonna be a, a, a top um, skill to, to learn too as a student. Uh, but for the parent, for you to stay on top of deadlines, what we do from the Office of Parent and Family Programs, our newsletter is sent four times a year. In our newsletter, we always make a point to send reminders ahead of time so you can plan ahead of time. So deadlines related to financial aid, to paying the bill, um, employment on campus, um, and other, you know, campus life related experiences, college fairs, or I should say college fairs, career fairs. We send that information to you ahead of time so you're able to digest the information and share that with your student. We also have a calendar uh, moving online. So we're working on the calendar right now. It will be published on our website. And you can move through the calendar and learn about billing deadlines, academic deadlines, um, orientation deadlines, even holiday break um, deadlines. Um, and that will be up and running by the end of this month. Um, also, our um, URL address is parents.ucsd.edu. Again, parents.ucsd.edu you'll learn more about what our office um, is all about and how we keep you um, connected with important deadlines. Um, one last question I want to get to just before we wrap up is we have a question about how can parents from out of state get involved with the UC San Diego community? I think kind of similar to our, our in-state um, uh, parents, obviously the physical involvement is gonna be a little bit more challenging. Uh, but we encourage you to get to know our website, parents.ucsd.edu. We encourage you to sign up as a Triton Parent and Family Ambassador as well. Uh, while it might be a little bit difficult to be on campus to help with on-campus events, which at this point we're not able to have on-campus events, there are going to be plenty of opportunities because of the online opportunities of doing webinars that we can pull family members from all over the world. Sure, Myrna is local to San Diego, but there's gonna be opportunities like this for families to join webinars that we're gonna do throughout the academic year. 
We also talk to our parents and families to provide, um, you know, suggestions on surveys we might be sending out, um, or if you want to include a memo or a story through our first generation connection e-newsletter is another way to be involved. Uh, but at any point, we welcome phone calls that you want to, you know, ask us questions or just tell us, hey, my student's having a great time. We don't get enough of those phone calls. We would love to hear more about those. Um, but be sure to sign up to our newsletter, give us a call, and we can always talk about how you can be involved with your student's experience. And you can do all of that, as Trina mentioned, at our website parents.ucsd.edu. You can email us at parents at ucsd.edu. Uh, you can give us a call uh, to our parent hotline uh, where uh, we will give you um, a call back now as uh, you know, working off campus. Um, but when we are on campus, that's a line that we always answer. And you can connect with us um, on our social media accounts. So if that's Facebook, or Twitter, that's at Trying Parents, or forward slash Trying Parents on Facebook, or on Instagram, it's at UCSD Parents. Uh, just to stay up with the know of what's going on and another way that you can interact with not just us, the Office of Parent Family Programs, but the other parents who are connected with us via our social media accounts. Again, I wanna thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I wanna wish you all the best, not just it, with your Summer Bridge and CAST programs that are starting this summer, but with the fall quarter. And uh, congratulations once more from all of us in your admittance and acceptance into UC San Diego and the start of a great educational journey as a Triton. Thank you. <laughs>